We in the current daf from Sech Pesachim daf Mem Vav. Begin on the bottom of Mem Hayim Beis. Pull ends up at the bottom of Yamin. The Gemara continues to explain the halacha of our previous Mishnah, which was speaking about when the dough and the cracks of the bowl, as they apply to Chametz of Pesach. And now our Mishnah is going to tell us. Our Gemara is going to tell us regarding as the same thing applies to the laws of Tum. Shis Kos Pas Bekazik and Neches Kol Tani Tam Daf. Chaim Pishan was joining us with today's daf. Some things we discuss in today's daf are four interpretations. Of the part that the Gemara is up to right now, the Tumah status of dough in the cracks of a Kli. In other words, what exactly is the Mishnah saying when this is Bechil in the Tumah? Then we continue with the next Mishnah regarding dough that turned white but has no cracks, its status regarding it being qualified as Chametz. Then a parenthetical discussion regarding how far a person must travel to satisfy various responsibilities, Avening, TLC Daim, and so on. Then we go with regarding making uh, the next Mishnah regarding making a Tumah dough on Pesach, how do we map for because as we'll discuss, there's, there's different problems that you run into either way you go, and what do you end up, what are you going to do because it might become chametzik. Then we get into a discussion regarding why is it permitted to cook on Yom Tov for the following Shabbos, meaning if Yom Tov is on Friday, and then the Shabbos, how you allowed to cook for Yom Tov the Shabbos. <coughs> Some important terms and concepts we can discuss are what's called Betzik HaCherosh, which is dough that turned white, but has no cracks. So it's like this quasi-state, is a chametzik or not. Tebis enough is when a person chooses to give it to a particular kayin, so he gets what's called gratitude. In other words, he could get a certain kickback, so to speak. And that's like a certain monetary uh, gain or, or, or shear that you have in the actual truma itself. The concept of hayal means since, that we interesting concept, we take a possible future outcome into account when evaluating a current situation. So since if this and that, so right now I consider it halakhically like that, we'll see two different actual um, cases of this concept of Hayal. And Erev Tavshilin is the rabbinic uh, requirement when someone is, is baking from cooking from Yom Tov to Shabbos that actually before Yom Tov he really has to start the cooking process so that it's evident that he, what he's doing over here has already been started beforehand and as we'll see in the Gemara the reason why the Erev Tavshilin is even required. So we begin the current Daph and Hayim Abbey, it's fallen up at the bottom of the Yom where we had said in the Mishnah Daph Hey Amen Al, dough that's stuck in the cracks of a Kli, that on Chametz and Pesach is going to be dependent if it's a Gezayis or less than the Gezayis. We, we get, had a whole discussion in the Gemara where we told them at the bottom of the vessel, the side, the top of the lip, where we told them exactly, but we said that it depends. If it's less than the Gezayis, that's bottled the Miyutai. If it's a Gezayis, that's a significant amount, then it's going to be a problem with Chametz and Pesach. Now, our Gemara continues and says, Same thing regarding that of Tom. Now, what, what does that mean? So the Mishnah says, in love, if the person is particular regarding that dough in the bowl to take it away, so chaitzis. So then it's, it's interposition. The tvil in the mikvah is not going to be valid. We mentioned yesterday yeah. the stickers on on a bowl that you tiling. So we do it regarding one halacha called tvilas kelim. Here, we're generally, when we talk about tvil, we mean like for halachas of tahara. But be that as it may, it's a chaitzis. It's in the way. You don't really want it there. So then it's it's not going to be a valid tvil. You have to take off those stickers and get off that gugan and get, and get it off. Let's say you want it to be over there. And here, in, the, in regards to the case of the dough in the cracks of the vessel, it actually plugs up the hole. Sometimes there's cracks in these earlier vessels, so you actually want the dough to stay over there. So then, but then as the halacha, like the trap, as the like the bowl, it's not going to be chadzitza. You want it to be and it's part of the vessel. Fine. That's what the Mishnah says. The only problem is, as the Gemara I don't understand. Me, dummy, is it comparable that you're saying v'chein? You said halacha regarding Pesach with chametz with the with the dough in the cracks of the bowl, and I see and v'chein and also. What's that? V'chein. It's not v'chein. It's different. Hasam over there by Pesach b'shiura regarding a measurement of if it's a kazayis or less than the kazayis. That's what tell you know, so you made it dependent on hachavah here by the laws of tuma. Bechpei to tell you know, so you tell me a whole different qualification. You tell me it doesn't make a difference if there's a lot or a little. You tell me if it bothers you or not. So what's that? V'chein. What's the v'chein? What's also? So I remember he says, you're right, Ema say, you're in the Tumah, in the king, say, add on the word Enoi, not Bechein, that, right, regarding Tumah, it's not like that, it's not dependent on the laws of measurement, it's rather dependent on your Kepeta, not on my buy, buy system, come on, how Bechein, in the Tumah, it doesn't say an Ema Chein, it says, and, and also regarding the laws of Tumah. So, so Abaya says, well, this is what we're saying, what we're going we're gonna to be answering now, three to root seven, that they're all going to interpret the Mishnah very similarly, Regarding either regarding the laws of being mitzaref, mitzaref the, 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 the that of the dough to other food items regarding the laws of the shir of kebeya, or it's going to be regarding the laws of chatzitza for tevila regarding if it's if it's if it's getting in the way of the bowl, or it's actually talking about 
the bowl becoming tummy is, do we consider the, the, the dough as, as part of the bowl? And each one of them are going to essentially say that you have to really break up this sentence in the Mishnah. So Abai says like this. He says, V'chein, so too, as it's in the Mishnah, V'chein, so too, as it's in the Mishnah, V'chein, so too, as we're talking about regarding combining Tumah, but specifically on Pesach, as we're going to explain, that you're right, on Pesach, there it actually is the same thing like Chametz, where it depends on the shear, the amount of a Kezayis or less, for the laws of Tumah. Now, but you're right, when the mission then continues, was talking about, but on the rest of the days of the year, then they complete, and then there actually is a differentiation between if it bothers you or if it doesn't bother you. And that's what the Seva the Mishnah was saying, as the Gemara explains. So everyone really is going to be saying the same idea, that there's a difference between during Pesach and during the year. And when we say V'chein, it's really going on Pesach. The laws of Tama on Pesach are going to be the same thing as Chametz on Pesach. But when we say the next words in the Mishnah, that it te- depends on your Makhbar or not, that's going to other days of the year. That's how all three interpretations are going to, exp- are going to explain the halach of the Mishnah. But then each one is just going to have a problem in the previous one's interpretation, and then we're going to say a slightly different interpretation. So first, Abayi says like this. He says, hey, then what's the case talking about? We're talking about when there's less than a egg size of food items. Now, what's significant of a kebeya is, the shiv Thomas Eichlin is only behind the size of, of like an egg. Now, you have less than amount of egg, amount of food. But the nagu Bahi now, but they're touching this dough that's attached to the bowl. And now, uh, now they're all connected. You have the dough in the bowl, which is touching that food item that's less than the gabeya. And now a thing of tuma touches them, because they're all connected, and they become tummy. And then they touch tahar food items. So this explains the Gemara like this. Be Pesach, the Isurei Chashim, where the Isur of Chametz makes it significant, makes it a Chashim thing, because since Kezayis was already mentioned in regarding the Halach of Isur of Chametz, so it's a significant zav. So it's not nullified regarding the bowl, as we learned in the first part of the Mishnah. Oh, so since we say regarding the laws of Chavaz and Pesach, it's, it, gives, it has a significance. So regarding the laws of Tama also, it's not going to be considered as bottle as nullified to the bowl, because it has a significance. So therefore, mitzvah. So therefore, it's going to combine with the food item to supplement to the measurement of a kebeya. So although you're really not makrit, really, you want this to become part of the bowl. But it's a significant thing. It cannot be bottled. It does not lose its significance. And therefore, those food items will be with Tommy other things because they do have the Shira Kebeya. Because you do consider the dough as part of the food items and not part of the bowl. Now, we have the Shai Maishashana, but the other days of the year where you cannot say Isuri Chishuba because there's no Isur on dough every other day of the year. Oh, that's where the Big Kebeya tell you most. That's what the Mishnah was saying, but that's going to depend if it bothers you or not. In love, if it bothers you that you don't want to it on the bowl, then it's tough. It's going to combine with the other food items because it's considered as an oichel because you're going to end up taking it away. You don't want to leave it there in the bowl. And right to be human, but if you wanted to stay with it to like fill up the cracks, hare, hare, but it's like the bowl itself. That was interpretation number one. That you're right, there's a difference between Pesach and the rest of the year. That if it's uh, on Pesach when it's a Gizayis, so then you have to be, do beer chametz. It's not bottled to the clay. And therefore, this is the first interpretation of Bayan is, is saying that it's going to be mitzarif. But when it's less than the gedayas, then it's not going to be mitzarif to the rest of the food act. The rest of the year, it's going to depend if you're makbar love or you're ready to be kiyumah. But not to the rabbi. Rabbi has a difficulty with this interpretation. He says, Vikritani are the words of the Mishnah that it says that if you're makbar, then mitzarif, then it's going to combine. Your interpretation is lacking a little bit. Because the Mishnah said the difference is going to be if it's a chatzitza or not. The way you're interpreting has nothing to do with chatzitza. You're telling me it has to do with the laws of being mitzar, of combining. So that's not the case the Mishnah is, is describing. So Elam Rav, rather Rav says something similar but, but different. This, is, will, this will be regarding the laws of chatzitza. We're talking about where it's to purify the bowl that had become tummy. We're here also, it's the same thing. It will depend on if it has a kezayis or less than a kezayis on Pesach, and when it says v'mak for love, that's going on the rest of the days of the year. As the Gemara explains, hey, what's the case talking about? You're going to tamei hachari, but the bowl became tamei. Uboy lajvuli, and you want to go ahead and try to immerse it into the mikvah. So bed Pesach on Pesach, ha, that, that in other words, that since by Pesach, since a kezayis is significant and you violate it, so when it's on the walls 
of the bowl, the Isuri Choshev. It's, 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 it gives it some significance, so then you have to take it away from the bowl. So therefore, Chaitzis is going to be in a deposition, it's going to get in the way, and it's not going to be like the bowl itself. And even if you're not even Makhbar Allah, you don't even care about it, you want to stay there, it doesn't make a difference. You're going to have to take it off anyway, you'll be your Chamas on it. Ah, so therefore, the Lord Sokol Atfilah. So therefore, the Tfilah is not going to work. And so, so this is the second interpretation, which was saying that here, it's not going to work on Pesach because it has the share of Bir Chamas. But the Shai Mishashan, but all the other days of the year, it doesn't make a difference if there's a lot of dough or there's a little amount of dough, but the Kabeda Talimus depends on if it bothers you or not. Imak, love it bothers you, Chaisen, then it's going to be Chatzitza. Then Rates of the Kiyuma, but if you want it to be with every Karebe, it's going to be like the bowl itself. That's the second interpretation, and here it makes sense, because that's what the words of the Mishnah was, that it said, Imak, will love Chaisen, this has to do with Chatzitza. The first interpretation was saying, if it's combining for the sheer of Thomas Eichel, that has nothing to do with the, the halach of Chatzitza. The problem is, even with this interpretation, ask about Rav Papa. Rav Papa still asks on the second interpretation. Rav, he says, Mikitani, does the Mishnah say, Rehen Tahara? That, it, it, there's, there's two lines here in the Mishnah that each next interpretation has a difficulty with. If I have a good interpretation, the Rehen is going on Pesach, and regarding Tahara, and regarding Tumah, the laws of Tumah, and, and, and the rest of Mikitani, Mik- is going on the rest of the day of the year. Problem is, but it says that it's regarding Chatzitza, and he wasn't talking about regarding Chatzitza. But now, Rav Papa, his difficulty is, it doesn't say Bechein Lin Tahara, although you tell me it's regarding Chatzitza, Hal Enid Tumah Ketan, it says regarding Tumah. You described to me a case that it's going to be Chatzitza of Tahara, but, but it doesn't say Bechein Lin Tahara, it says regarding, so to regarding Tumah, in Mak Rulav Chaitzitz, in Mak Rulav Enid Chaitzitz. So El Rav Papa, rather, Papa says similarly, but, but different, and he gets all, all three points. It says Bechein Lin Lahir Tumah La Reva. He's talking about if the bowl will become tame through the dough. That also depends on Pesach, depends on if it has Kezayis or not. And when the Mishnah says, but it's going on the other days of the year. How so? <clears throat> so he explains. <clears throat> if a Sheretz, a dead bug that makes, creates tummy, touches that piece of dough. So this is where it's going to make a difference. If it's Pesach, we're talking about the bowl itself becoming tummy. If a tummy touches the dough in the crack, that's going to be the criteria. That's the last interpretation. Bit Pesach, when you have the size of a Kezayis, the Yisuri Chashim, it's prohibition of the Kezayis that you have to be a Chamas on. Gives it a significance, and then it's Chaitzis. And interesting, if it's going to be Chatzitza, it means to say that it's not part of the bowl itself. So then for Lenoch Salah Tumah, so then for the Tumah Sheretz is not making the bowl Tumah because it's not touching the bowl. It's touching the dough. And, and, and even if you're not particular about the dough, you don't care to keep it, but it doesn't make a difference. The Gizayis have to be chametz on it anyway. That's less than the Gizayis. If it doesn't bother you, then no, then it'll be considered part of the bowl. So if it's not, if it's not considered part of the bowl, you're not, it's not touching the bowl, it's touching the dough. The dough is not going to transmit to the bowl because it to, the, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a reason you cannot make a kli into a shame. But B'Shayim, I said, in the other days of the year, the Bikipa, the Tali, that depends on if it bothers him or not. Imak, but love if it bothers him that the dough is here, that even less than a kezayis, it's is going to be a chatzitz. It means to say it's not considered part of the bowl, and the sherets are not being the time of the bowl. But when Rachel Bikumi wants us to still be harei karei, it's like the bowl itself. It says, if the sherets touch the bowl itself, because it's part of the bowl. So therefore, it's yes, it's v'chein lenin tahara, v'chein lenin tumah, regarding if it's going to make this bowl tummy, regarding the laws of chatzitz. Is this dough chaitzitz for the bowl, or is it part of the bowl? Is going to depend B'shayin Hashanah on Kepeda and on Pesach. It's Mitali on the Shir of Kizayis. Therefore, we said Bechain because regarding the Shir of Kizayis, it's going to be the same on Pesach regarding the laws of Tama, not just regarding the laws of Biyachamis. Whereas when the Mishnah continues with the next word, B'Kepeda, that's going to be B'shayin Mois Tasha. You know, look at the next Mishnah, which continues on the laws of dough as it applies to Chamis on Pesach. It says the Mishnah Batzik Hachevish, which the first interpretation means the death dough. Meaning it's not recognizable did it become chametz stick or not. Because it's, it's different. It's like, a, it's like a cherish, which is a deaf person that has ears. But you can't tell if he hears you or not. Because you can't really tell regarding his intelligence. Or another interpretation, Rashi actually means not batzik, not batzik ha-cherish, but rather batzik ha-cheres, with a sin. Meaning it's hard like earthenware. And you cannot tell if it became chametz stick. So there's no cracks, but it's like got, the, the surface got white. So you can't tell if it's chametz stick or not. So... Says the Mishnah, if you have another dough that was kneaded the same time as this dough, and that dough already became chamasik, 
So I raise the asa, so then you're going to say that this one is also asa. So although you can't tell, you'll say that it's going to be the same as the other. But it says the Gemara, what's the main sham by ma? What's a lochet? There is no other dough to compare it to. What do you do then? So that I remember, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish says, okay, it's kadesh yelach adam and migdal nunya letzveria. It's the amount of time that it takes to go from migdal nunya to tzveria, which that is a mill. Then you'll say that it became chum cigarette. Says the name of Elvis, what's the name of from Migdal Nun to Tver? Why do you say a mill? So if you want to come back to this, we'll come to tell you, Gishiri the mill. How long is a mill? It's going to be Migdal Nun, but Tver is when you take that, that, that walk, that height from Migdal Nun to Tver, that's how long it takes to walk a mill, and that's the amount of time that it's going to be for the shear of the Kamehameha. So, now, so uh, before that time, you would not be able to uh, uh, apply Yeah, so then it's not Kamehameha. Unless there's another dough that you could compare it to, and that dough became chametzik, then you also became chametzik. But if not, then we're going to presume that it's not chametzik, and uh, then you could use it. The sheet is if you didn't need, need it, it, I mean, just left it alone. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, well, that's what happened. I mean, if you're working it, then it's not going to become. It's said you tip, 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 tip it's the whole time. Here, it's, you have this dough. That it, 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 we don't. It doesn't say how it got there, but it, it became like this whitened surface and. It looks, it looks, doesn't, you can't tell if it's chamasig or not, then you go based on the amount of time that it was left. Now, another teaching from Amr Bavo, Amr Shimon Lakish, and, and that's why we bring it over here, although it also has to do with a shira mill, says the Mishnah, for Legabo, that let's say someone is needing another person's dough. He gets paid, he's the town needer, and he, the vessels of the person that he's needing his dough are tummy. So until four mil, the Chacham required him to go to the mikvah. So tell you this person's vessels that it should be in a state of tahara. So to ulitfila, to daven, if let's say someone is traveling and it's time to lay down and go daven. So if there's a shul in front of him, a distance of four mil, he has to go and daven over there and sleep over there. So to ulitfila sidai, regarding washing his hands for eating a meal, for bread, if he could find water four mil in front of him, he has to go over there and wash his hands. And these are all a share of our ba milan of four mil. That's one version. However, Amr of Nachman Yitzchak, he says, Evo Amra, Evo, he said this teaching actually in the Rebbe Shlakish, and it wasn't a Rebbe like the first version said it. Varba Amr he actually said that applies to four different, different teachings. In other words, the Shir of Formil was the three that we said, and one more. And which was, and one of them was, it's a locha of tanning, which is the measurement of tanning, which is, if you, there's certain animal skins that are very soft. And the halacha is that they have tumma like meat. Now, and they mentioned the chulma kachopez and perko eberetiv. Now, the, the share of four mil is the, is the amount of time to, to nullify it from being considered as basr because of the tanning, because of it was being worked through and became like hard like leather. There's not a good mission sack to school and says bakulon and all those that the chacham mentioned over the perko eberetiv that they, we say that their skin is like, is going to be the tumma like their basr and it's going to be tumma of eichlin because it's soft and you could eat it. But all of them shi'ibdan, if you tan them, which is a certain process, that chemical process that turns the skin into hard leather, ben or it was walked on the amount of time of the tanning, because the way they would do with these hides, they would put it, they would put it down on the floor in front of the people that would be walking, and that was the beginning process of tanning it, it would harden the leather. So that tyrant would make these things that they, they don't have any more tumma of basr, and it's gonna be tar, chutz mi arhadim, except for this a person's skin. Where that won't have this exemption. I mean, comic the Hebrew, then that's what we're explaining. How much is the amount of time that people walked on this skin that it's going to be considered as a piece of tanned leather and it won't have a halacha like a food anymore? It's That's the fourth one that we said that if the amount of time that people walked in it's 72 minutes, it's the, the, the four mil, then it's already going to be considered as a, a piece of wood and it won't have the halacha of Tamar Eichel. Now, the Gemara qualifies, however, on a basis of Says Loishan, we didn't learn this obligation of Dalad Mil El Lafana, which Rashi says it's going on the Tila Sidaim. If you want to eat a meal, you have a bread and you don't have any water, or if you have to dabble with a minion, where you're going on the road, because he says regarding, let's say, a gobble, the town leader, he he always has to go Dalad Mil because what's he losing? He's not traveling anywhere, he's, he's in the city. So, but we only learned this only Lafana if you're traveling on your way and it's in front of you. Avla Achram, but you have to go backwards to go, oh, hey, we passed the rest stop. Uh, 30 minutes ago, and then it's, it's we're gonna have to go back to wash the hands. No, I'll fill a million in the chazan, even one mil, 
which is a quarter of the dime, even that you don't have to go back. But the Megumar makes it uh, an inference. Amr Machi says, but I mean, no. But, but you can make a dig from this of Rabbi Yisabi Hanino, who he said explicitly that even a million don't go back, but what you can see from that is, but million the chaisa, only a million don't go back. But that would teach us, but however, less than a mil, you do have to go back, and therefore, it's only up to a mil. So, but, uh, but a mil, up to a mil, you would have to go back. You would have to go backwards. We skip that rest stop. We've got to go, go around and take that U-turn and, and come back uh, up to a mil. But for full mil, is only if it's in the direction that you're going in. We did not look at the next mission. Again, continuing this halach of Do on Pesach. This is a, a unique case that the mission describes. How could you separate challah from a dough that became tummy? Now, so therefore, the challah that you would separate from this dough is not fit for a kind to eat because it's like truma. Challah is a type of truma, and kind cannot eat truma that became tummy. So how are you going to burn this beyomtim on the yomtim of Pesach? Like Rashi points out, there's three different problems. You can't bake it. Because it's not fit to be eaten anymore. And you can't do a malacha of baking on yomtim. That's not for Eichel Nefesh. You can't leave it to burn it by the evening after yomtim because it might become chametzik in that amount of time. Neither can you burn it or feed it to the dogs because the halach is in of iron kachim yomtim. You're not allowed to get rid of kachim on yomtim. So you, you're, you're, you're really, you have no options. You can't bake it, you can't burn it, you can't leave it. So what do you do with this challah Anya. So the first opinion of Rabbi Yezer, I mean, he says like this. He says, I'll tell you what to do. Don't call it challah. Until you first bake all the doughs. And the reason why you're allowed to do that is because each and every dough is still is fit for the person. Why? Well, isn't one of them going to be challah, which is going to be inedible, which is going to be baking for a non nechadefet purpose? No, because from each dough I could separate a little bit. Then, after that I baked, if I want to, I could take one whole challah, one whole bilkala, and make that the challah one. Like the Gemara teaches, Rabbi Yezah holds, that the basket that you take the breads out from the oven, you put it into the basket, that combines it for challah. So you don't really have to call it challah until after you bake. So first bake, and then afterwards make one of them challah. So you were able to get away with it and become a chametz stick, because you baked it, which doesn't let it, if you bake within a certain amount of time, it doesn't become a chametz stick. And voila, now you have this one that You'll, now I'll take one of them and, and make it into challah. But I was able to be able to make it because that was the one I was able to eat. And I was able to maybe just take up a small breakfast from that. So therefore, uh, don't call it challah until you make it. That's option number one. Then the Seir Rami says, talk about tzayin. He says, you stunt the leavening process by putting the dough into cold water. That's what you should do. You're not going to bake it. You're not going to leave it. You put it in cold water, it'll prevent it from becoming chamas. And as Tyson points out, that actually, even the Greece to them the Seira, that that is an option to do it. Amr Bishua, in between to Amr Beis, he says, no, he says, what do you mean? This dough this is not your problem of becoming Bal Yor Bal Yimatzeh. He wasn't explain because it's not his until, uh, 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 because after he calls it Chala, it's, it's the Kayit. And the Pasik tells you, L'cha, L'yura L'cha, which is, you can't see your own chametz. Shalcha to right? But this is not yours. You can see that of Shalchen Shal Gavaya. And it's also not a problem about being Machshal Mekayin, because it's not his yet, because it didn't come to his hand either. So it's nobody's, it's no man's land. So it's not your problem. So he says, Elam Afrishas, you know, you Mafresh Chala, when the Chas had everything, leave the door until the evening. Then the Chmitz of Mitz, we came from the Chmitz of Not my problem. It's not my chametz. I don't buy it. Bal Yira or Bal Yimatz. That's the three different approaches in the mission. Now, the Gemara wants to explain that Messiah was a whole different approach, but the Gemara wants to explain regarding do we consider this to be a problem about Chometz on Pesach regarding leaving it or not? Because that's what we have in Machlikis. Rabbi Yezid says, you got a problem over here. You got to go find a way you go to bake it first and call it, then call it Chalot. But she's like, well, what's Messiah's Chalot and just leave it. It has nothing to do with me. So what's the machlik? It says, Let's say the machlik is regarding the pleasure of gratitude. What does that mean? There's a very small amount that you, as the Yisrael, have in every truma and every chal. As the Bryson teaches the of Chavzayim and Alf, a Yisrael is allowed to tell his friend, you know, here, take this $10, give all your truma to my grandson. See, my daughter is a Yisrael, but she married a kain. 
And my grandson, he needs some truma. Go ahead, here's ten dollars, and give all your tzedak, give all your truma, give it to my grandson. Now, that's a tevis another that Yisrael has in this kala, that he can decide which coin he wants to give it to. So he could take a little bit, you know, kickbacks from his friend. That's a, you want, you, know, you want the, the truma? I'll give, you know, just give a little donation. That's called tevis ano. So you don't really own the truma, you don't really have any rights to truma, but you had tevis ano in the truma. That's the machlekes in the Mishnah. Why? The Beleza Sabi held tevis ano. It's a monetary a component over here. It's like it's my chalo. And therefore, if it becomes chametzik, he's going to be violating in that chalo. And therefore, you have to bake it first. Because if you don't bake it, it's going to become chametzik. It's yours. You have shares in this chalo. It's called tevis and all. I'm sure so no, there is not in the moment. It's like it's in as money. It's not mine. It's not my prohibition. Because I can make money off of this, that doesn't make this mine. And and also the fact that let's say as a deposit, it's not a deposit, it's not like I'm, I have anyone's deposit because it didn't become any coins yet. So it's nobody's. So therefore if you hold, you can allow it to become coins <coughs> and your blessed can never allow it to become coins. <laughs> right. But that's because that's it. it's your chametz. Here's not his chametz. It's not mine. It's, it's not mine. Avlata roishal achem shal gavaya. It's not mine. It's not my thing. I don't own it. So therefore, it's it's. I always said even if it's not yours, otherwise that's sufficient for klal. No, that's because you can't do bit. Always said that, but that's because it's but it's yours. It's it's, it's your chametz. You can't do bit. That's that's what we were saying. You can't. But here's not mine. I don't own it. So it's not mine. Not mine. So somebody else is the coins or whoever's whoever the coin is. We don't know who he is. It, but that's so let's say that the machlek is we're going to give tevis and not or not. Says the like, no, not necessarily. The kolim asabi we could say that everyone holds tevis and not ain't a moment. Really, it's not considered that you own this because I can make <coughs> money off of this. The hacha rav over here is behayil kavuti. The machlek is regarding the concept of sins of hayil. What's this? If you have something he holds, you're going to violate the chametz of chalo. Because I mean, we say like this: Hail be ibai since the person wants to. Inshallah, you could ask, you could go, you could, you could go to the chacham and ask on it, and it'll go back to becoming table on type produce, which is the person's. Because on every nether, on every hektish, and every truma that has a uh, that you sanctified orally, you could go to the chacham and you could ask him, and he could uproot your words. So therefore, mamainehu, it is your money, and you're going to violate it. Because it is still yours. You have rights over here to get and undo it. Now, baking a yamtiv is permitted because, like we said, you didn't call it yet challah. So although one of them is not going to be fit, you're again rashly addressed to the question. It's going to be permitted because each one you could say, that's not the challah one. But the truth is that rashly just addressed another question that we'll discuss a little bit more. The truth is, even if you did call it challah, you could still bake it because if you want to, you could still be shy about it. So then it could be back yours again, so that you should always be able to bake it even if you made a challah first. But since the contract yes, and the basket combines it, and then for you could separate it after you baked it, that's better to bake it first because you gain, because as much as you could, we're going to rather do without this halachic chiddush of hayal, it would be more preferred that way. Okay, we'll be there as an aid, contract yes, sir, that since you could be shoyal in it and it could come back being yours, so you can undo its status as chalas, and then it is considered your money. It's still considered your dough, so then you cannot allow it to become chalas. The Meshuvah said, the Meshuvah held that, no, we don't say hayal. So therefore, it's not gonna, he's not going to bind that in regarding the chalas, because it's not his. But regarding the baking, he says that you cannot bake it, because he holds that, no, one of them is not fit for him. So you can't bake them all and then do the like a yazir. And, and, and therefore, because of that, he says, just leave it, because... It's, it's not yours anyway. You, you, we don't say that since if I would ask it to undo it, it would be mine. Well, now it's not. It's not mine. So therefore, you're not violating anything. And everybody says, just leave it. That's the machlik is. Those are the two possible interpretations of what machlik is. Is it regarding the principle of hoyl or is it regarding the principle of tightness and that's considered money or not? Now, the Gemara discusses now another type of hoyl. Related discussion, but a different idea. Itbar, we learned. Ha'ifim yamtiv l'chal. Someone's baking from yamtiv to a weekday. What does this mean? The Gemara actually explains the cases. The guy finished eating his yomtiv meals. Now, it's <coughs> obvious that now he doesn't need this food that he's baking until matzah yomtiv, until tomorrow, he's not eating anymore. 
So, what's the halacha? Rav Chizdama, he says, like, uh, you get lashes because of my son. Like, you don't do malacha on Yom Tiv. Only if it's for Eichel Nefesh. It's not for Eichel Nefesh. You're not eating this. So that doesn't mean anything that's made for cooking if it's for the Yom Tiv need. Rav Amal, and like the Rebbe says, no, you don't get lashes. Why is this? So the Yomai explains. Rav Chizdama, like he says, you get lashes because lo yamin and hoi lamekam la'archem. We don't say that, oh, if since if guests would come, you would need the bread today. Chazile, it's fit for him. Okay, so they're not going to get lashes because technically this could be a Yom Tiv need. No, you don't say such a thing. And you violate the malach of, of, of one of the Lama Tiz on Yom Tiv. Rabbi, I like it. He says, no, you don't get lashes. Yeah, I mean, how do we say how? You say since. Since if someone would come, you would be able to use it and you would need it. So, okay, so now also you're not going to get lashes. Obviously, you're not going to do that, but to get lashes, no, because you say the principle of life. Now, Amalei Rabbi Rav Chizda, Rabbi Master Rav Chizda, like this, says, wait, Lidli Dach, according to you, Dami, that you say, Lemon, you have, we don't say the principle of Hayol. Hey, Chayfen, Mi Yom Tiv How do you bake from Yom Tiv to Shabbos? Unless if you say that sins of guests would come, like, which was like Rabbi's opinion, that that removes the Isidai Raisa, and as we'll shortly see, okay, and then Eir Tavshin will remove the Isidai Bonan, so I could understand that it really is fit for the whole Yom Tiv. Even what you're making for Shabbos, technically, Hoyle would tell you it's, it's fit for Yom Tiv too. So I can understand why that would remove the Isidai Raisa, but according to you, that you don't say Hoyle, Hoyle had a big from Yom Tiv to Shabbos. So Amalek, he says, as we'll see why, why Rabbi had a problem with that, so he says, what do you mean? Because of Erev Tavshilin, there's a special rabbinic halacha that if you start baking before Yom Tiv, that then we let you bake from Yom Tiv to Shabbat. So ask Rabbi, from Mishim Erev Tavshilin, well, because of Erev Tavshilin, Shabbat, the Isidai Raisa, how could the Rabbana come over here and permit a biblical Isidai? If you say, like me, that there's a principle of Hoyle which tells you biblically there's no problem, I could understand that now Hoyle removes the Isidai Raisa, and if Tashim would move this Rabbi, but according to you, how does that make sense? You, it, biblically, the guy's violating a malacha de raisa when he's cooking from Yom Tiv to Shabbos. How could Eiv Tashim, the rabbinic injunction, override a biblical Isser, a big Yom Tiv to Shabbos? So now Malay says to him, no. Mid de raisa, he has a different explanation. It's biblically, Tzarchi Shabbos, Nasim Yom Tiv. You're actually allowed to do the needs for Shabbos on Friday Yom Tiv. Because as Rashi explained, the Pasik says, Achashi Ochel Chol Nefesh, you're allowed to make Ochel Nefesh. I don't know that's for Yom Tiv, but Shabbos and Yom Tiv are both of the same sanctity because they're both called Shabbos. The, Yom, the Torah calls Yom Tiv Shabbos too. And just like you're allowed to cook for that day, you're allowed to cook for the next day, which is also Shabbos. They're both considered Shabbos. Now, but Rabbanu, the God's book is there, but rabbinically, when they made a decree and they said that if you don't make an Tav Shilom, that then they had a concern. And they said that Shem Yom, or maybe people are going to say, Oh, from Yom Tiv Oh, I see a lot of things from Yom Tiv from a different day. So, maybe a lot of bake for Matzah Yom Tiv too. We're not going to be able to differentiate. The key, but that's the Rabban. The but once Rabban required you to do, that you can't just do from Yom Tiv to another day, even for Shabbos. There's only Erev Tavshilin, it's like Kara, then there's already a sign, a recognition that, oh, you know, I can't just. You see the matzah with the, with the egg over there. You see, you realize that, that there's something that you got to do beforehand. Oh, must be, it's not just regular. Oh, for Shabbos you got to do it, but you can't do it from Yom Tiv to Chal. That's how Erev Tavshilin helps, because everyone agrees it's only for the rabbinic problem. Biblically, of course, you can't do it. Biblically, there's no problem, either because of Hayal or because Emdah the Shabbos are both considered Shabbos and they have the same condition. But the Gemara continues asking and says, Ace, the Gemara asks the following rice. They have an animal in danger, which it's, it's, it's deathly ill. So the guy wants to slaughter it on Yom that it shouldn't die, it's going to be a loss. This, this animal is going to go very shortly. When an animal dies in, in, in Jewish law, you got a major loss because it's available. It's, you can't, you, what are you going to do with it? You're going to sell it to the non Jews, you're going to have a major loss. That market is much cheaper. So, says the Bryce like this You can't slaughter this animal. Unless if you could end up eating an olive sized piece of this meat, roasted, which that's the quickest one you could do. Roasting is the easiest type of cooking. If you could do that when it's still enough time in the day to skin the animal, cut up an olive sized piece of the meat, roast it, and eat it, if you have that amount of time, then it's permitted, even if you're not going to eat from it. But as long as you have that amount of time, then you can slaughter the end. Now says the Gemara, okay, it sounds like Yochalach, well, as long as you could eat. Avogab delay boy, even though the guy doesn't want to eat. Says the Gemara, says Rabbi Trav, this is a bishop of the according to me, it makes sense. Dami, did I say Hayil? I say sense. Okay, Hayil be eat boy, lemeich lamatzah, since if you wanted to eat, you could eat it. Shemach Yishka, that's what the Bible is saying that you could slaughter the animal. We don't say oil, so why are you allowed to slaughter? But the guy doesn't want to eat. He already eats, and he's not going to eat. 
So we don't say Hanas. How are you allowed to do on Yom Tov? So now Malay Reb Chizda said to him, "Mishum hefsed the money because of the loss of the money. You guys will lose thousands of dollars from this animal. You lose the rib. You lose the, the you know sirloin. You lose all these." Uh, somebody knows, right? How many pieces of meat you're going to lose over here in this, you know, expensive uh, ox, Tyson to dollar over here, right? That caused a loss of money. So therefore, we let him go ahead and slaughter it. So he says, should have some money. Shreen is the rice because of a loss of money. So we're going to cause a biblical issue to be done. We have shchita on Yom Tov. I'm going to let you in. He says, yes. Because, and he, I explain you the longest. You're, you're, not, you're misunderstanding it, says the Quran. It's not because of a loss of money we let you override law. Mishum has in the money because of the loss of money. Gamar Baliboy, the guy makes up that he's gonna force himself to go beyond his ability. Lechel <coughs> he'll eat that olive size, and it's like Rashi saying, it's as if he needs that olive size piece on Yamta. Because of that size of meat, he he needs to slaughter the whole thing. Because the Fshik size Basmala Shit, you can't have an olive size of meat without slaughtering. And therefore, he'll force himself to eat echtav, echtav desh tikkun flesh of yamtiv. Now, but whereas we hear, when we're cooking for after yamtiv, where you can't say, Goma believer that he's forcing himself to, to force himself because he doesn't have any such rationale. So because of Hayl, says of Chizu, we're not going to permit it. It's a derisa because you don't need it for all that anything. But in contrast to this b'risa, where the guy says, yeah, I do need, I need because of the great loss of the money, I'm gonna, I want to eat a piece of meat right now, and therefore, okay, fine, you can eat, you can eat, and that's Eichel Nefesh, therefore it's going to be permitted. That's why it's not difficult on Chizr. Something to discuss in today's daf, and even in the Psach, daf Memvav, was we went, we explained how Lachad initially we said that we talked about the dough in the cracks. If something spilled between the cracks. So we said that regarding comments of that, so it depends on the Gezai's or less than the Gezai's. And we said, Bechain Le'inyan Tov. That if it's Makbid, if it bothers you that it's here, it's, it's, it's in the way, it's not considered part of the ball. If you want it to be over this, like, it's part, like, part of the ball. So the Gemara says, Mi Dami? What do you think? What's Heis Bechain? Vir by Chametz and Pesach is regarding the share of Gezai's. Over here, by Tzoma, we're saying it's regarding a Kepeid. That's a whole different criteria. And why is it so all interpretations basically were saying that so too regarding that Pesach is where we're going to say the laws of Tumah. The first interpretation says regarding Tzirus. What's the case? Let's say there's less than an egg size of food items, which it doesn't have, does not have a lock of Tumah. And then it's touching this dough, which is a share of a kezayis in the cracks of the bowl. So on Pesach, with the Iser of Chometz, which you have to get rid of it anyway, makes it significant and not secondary to the bowl, so then it's going to combine with the rest of the food items. That's what Bechein was going on. So everyone really has to amend the Mishnah to say Bechein is on Pesach. And when it talks about if you makbed or chaitzis, or any makbed, if you're into Bechein, it's not chaitzis, that's regarding all the other days of the year. All the other days of the year, that's going to depend on Kepeda. But Bechein is going on that the laws of Tumah will be for Pesach, like the way you have regarding its halach of Chometz of Pesach. The problem is, is that Niktani Mitzdarit doesn't say Mitzdarit, it says Chaitzit. The, the case you just described is it going to combine with the other uh, food items that are less than the Kabeya. But that's not what the Mishnah is saying. It's going to be Chaitzit, you're going to get in the way. There's, there's no element of getting in the way in the case you described. So the second interpretation says you're right. It's regarding if you want to table this bowl. If you table this bowl, but you can't get rid of all the stickers, get rid of all the food items on it. So the chain was that so to regarding Pesach. For the laws of tabling it, even if you, you want it to stay over there. But if it's a gizai, it's going to be chatzitza, because you have to get rid of it anyway. Even though you don't want the tiger tell you have to get rid of it. So it's in the way. The rest of the idea is going to depend if you might put it up. So that's, that's the case regarding chatzitza. The problem with that is, is that, no, does it say v'chein lin tahara? No, it says v'chein lin tuma. The case you described was chatzitza not regarding purifying it. You're talking about regarding making it tummy. So the third interpretation says it's regarding making the bowl tummy. Where Sherrod's touched the piece of the dough, on Pesach, the bowl is not going to be tame if it's a kazakh. Because even though you don't care and you want to leave it over there, so it should be part of the bowl, and like the, it's like the whole, you know, the Sherrod does not touch every part of the bowl. It touches, any, it, it touches anywhere, it makes the whole bowl tame. But on Pesach, it's not considered part of the bowl, it's a chatzitza. It's late enough to lay tumma because you're going to have to get rid of it anyway. And whereas regarding the rest of the year, it depends if you might or not, if it's considered part of the bowl or not. We went to the next case of Mishnah Betzik which is this doubtful dough, we're not sure if it's Chomet or not. 
So he said, the Mishnah said, if you have another piece of dough that's similar that became chametz, it's going to be asa. Awesome. The Gemara says, if you don't have, then it's going to make the measurement of how long it takes to walk a mill out of 18 minutes. Then we said, a shira, dollar mill of 72 minutes was regarding if you're kneading someone's dough, that you have to go ahead and walk a distance of, seven, of 72 minutes. For davening and for the tefillah sidayim, Rashi says that that's where we said that you only have to go if it's in what's called the fun of, if it's in front of the person. And the achrav, you only have to go not more than the mill, but up to a mill to go backwards 18 minutes to make the minion or to wash the dough down, you would have to go back. And then we said a fourth thing that was added on was the shear of ibud, which you have certain skins that are considered like the meat itself and has too much spice because it's soft. When, when you step in it for 72 minutes, it becomes hard and they're ready and therefore lose the status of a food and becomes more like a piece of wood. They went to Allah the next Mishnah. He said, how do you separate challah from a dough that was tummy on the Yom Tava As, um, so we had three different opinions. We had Gribble Yazer that said that, okay, don't call it challah until you bake it. So you could bake it because each one technically you could use it. And it's not necessarily the challah ones, although one of them will be, but that's not, not inherent in each and every one. And you could also separate, you don't have to take a whole challah. After that, you bake it. Then it's, it's not become a chametz. Well, then you can give it to the okay. The kohen can't eat it anyway. But then you'll call it chal afterwards, or you put it into cold water. I'll stunt it from becoming chametz. Or Yeshua says that you separate it and you leave it till the evening and become chametz. It's not your fault, not yours. It's it's of shalcha at iat rebel admal at roish alachem shal gavaya, and it's not your it's not your problem. Says the Gemara, what's the machlek is if it's your problem or not, if it's your dough or not? Either if it's tevis and not considered money. If you consider it money, then it's yours, because you have rights, and you can make money over this, so it's considered yours. That is a problem of your chametz. Rabbi Shuhal said, no, it's not considered your money, and if it's not a problem. Or, it's the concept of play, because ultimately, Malais, although it's challah, I could undo it, I could go to the chacham and undo it from its truma status of challah and make it back into table. So Rabbi Shuhal says it's considered money. Rabbi Shuhal says not, that's two interpretations of the Then we said, if I'm baked from Yom to two a weekday, it's machlik, we get lashed, and not why. Do we say the concept of a different hail? That if guests would come, would be fed. So I didn't violate the Isidai Raisa of baking on, 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 on Yom Tif for a non Eichel Nefesh purpose because guests would come. I would need it. That's the Machlech. It's if you get lashed and not now. We don't say, and now if, if you don't say like that opinion, if you don't say Hayel, so how do you bake from Yom Tif to Shabbos through an Erev Tavshilin? Because actually, this Madama holds that Midday Raisa is permitted because they're both called Shabbos. And so in Gezerah, that you might come to do it during the weekday. So that's what the Erev Tashim helps for the Rabbanan of that it's going to be a heck. Now, what's with a behemoth that's Mr. is in danger and you're allowed to slaughter it because of a loss of money? Ha, ha, what do you mean? That's the Israelites. How does the loss of money help you? Because come and believe it. The guy says he's going to force himself. He's going to eat that Kedzayas and you can't have a Kedzayas without slaughtering. And if that permits you, and if it is considered a Kedzayas purpose, and therefore you're allowed to go ahead and do that. On Yantiv, even according to my mama, that does not hold the concept of how to end the time of those things.